we've got a lot to offer here. We've got the recreation, we've got the scenery, lots of things to do here, and plus we're just great people. You know, I've lived here for 40-some um, years of my 50-some year life, and it's a really neat, really town because um, I think one of the greatest uh, assets is that they, the groups help each other out. Um, we, you know, always work well together. I mean, a lot of people really help each other out. I, I just like the community. Uh, the people around this area are very friendly. It's uh, where I have my business. My business is doing well. And uh, for me right now, this is where I want to stay. A, a good place for businesses to start and get their foot in the door. And uh, we found that we've been very successful here. And we've collaborated with other groups and businesses, and I think that's the type of community that we are. We work together to uh, ob obtain what we need and to accomplish what we need to do. If I'm going to raise a family and get to know my neighbors and uh, enjoy a life, West Salem is a place to be. Reviews about our school district here. Yeah. A lot of people move here because of the school district. Well, I've lived in West Salem um, since 1993, and my own children attended this school district from K-12, and now they're college students at UW-Madison. West Salem's a, a great place to live for lots of reasons. First of all, we have a great school district here. Um, people come to West Salem and, you know, just for that reason, thinking that that'll help their children. They live in a small community with a very good school system. Um, I moved uh, to Western Wisconsin in 1985, and when I got married and decided to raise a family, I decided this was the place to be. I um, met some people and was very impressed by the level of education that they got in their very small town um, high school, and I wanted my kids to have that benefit as well. I was just awestruck by the facilities that West Salem has to offer. I mean, this school system is wonderful, and the staff are wonderful. Uh, we've just been very impressed at everything that the school has been able to offer. Um, I can't think of a better place for um, raising children and raising your family than right here in West Salem. It's a great community. It's a small town. Children um, at all ages have the opportunities to participate and succeed in art and music and um, drama and all kinds of activities. And you don't have to be a star to be able to participate. So that, I think, is a wonderful opportunity. Art Hamlin Garland is the one of the people that we're promoting, I guess would be the best word for it. But there were 10 reasons why we feel it to be important from West Salem. One is Hamlin Garland. Second is Jay Johnson, who was the Admiral from West Salem, who was the top of the United States Navy just a few years ago. Thirdly, we're the home of the second woman doctor that ever practiced, practiced in the United States. Her name was Mary Lottridge, and she lived in the Octagon House across from our Savior's Lutheran Church. A fourth person who was very important to us was Fred Meyer. I don't know if you ever remember eating red dot potato chips. Well, they were ones when I was growing up as a kid in the 50s. Red dot was the big one, and he was the founder of red dot potato chips. Frito Lay took them over and he committed suicide because it was an unfriendly meal, okay? Then the next one that we say we're ready and we're important to is Ida Tilson. She was a poultry expert. She helped establish the Tuskegee Institute down in Alabama in the poultry department. She was the one that gave $40,000 to the community they built the Tilson Auditorium. We're also the home of Edna Gardner White, who was known as the Flying Grandmother. She also was the individual who was the first woman to own an airport in the United States. Her airport was down in Texas. We're also the home of a chicken called Biddy Rhodes. Biddy Rhodes laid 19 eggs in one day, 150 in a month and she was taken all over the area to state fairs, Minnesota, Missouri, Iowa, and so forth. She was purchased in Iowa, in Missouri, I'm sorry, and she died of a heart stroke down there. Another reason why we think we should be proud of being from West Ham is Damian M M Miller, who was the catcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks when they were 
the uh, World Series champion. And then, of course, he was with the Cubs and the Brewers, too, at one time. George Taylor. He was the first black man to run for president of the United States. Most people don't realize that. We know Obama is the first black man to be president, but nothing in history has ever really been made of who the first black man was. And it happened to be George Taylor, who has roots in the West Salem area. Uh, he ran in 1904. He ran against Teddy Roosevelt. And I don't know who the other Democratic candidate was, but he, that's when he ran. Of course, he didn't make much of a splash, but that's the only time he did run for president of the United States. And, second, and then one more thing that we always about, enjoy talking about is Mars candy bars. Very few people realize that the first Mars candy bars were sold here in West Salem and over in Bangor. The two towns were the places sold because of the fact that the Mars family was here in this area. Well, the school district of West Salem uh, produces a wonderful academic experience for our children as evidenced by the just the wonderful performance that the kids have on um, ACT tests and other post-secondary enrollment types of entrance exams. I think we are able to do something unique at West Salem and demonstrate the way in which kids are able to perform academically with our senior exit project. Now they need to um, demonstrate the ability to research and then share what they found with community members. There's a lot of community service that's involved with that, but the, the writing, the research, and those performance really weaves its way into the curriculum. From a, a, a developmental standpoint, at the, at the primary levels, we've reorganized our elementary school to make sure that we are maintaining small class sizes and we've um, infused um, lead teachers who are experts in reading and mathematics and lesson design. And we're seeing wonderful results already with kids performing at higher levels on both the state assessments and our local assessments as we monitor their literacy development through the primary school. Um, we, we just have the opportunities for kids at, at the secondary level in the areas of mathematics and science are second to none and beginning next school year we're going to be infusing um, educational technology from a completely different angle. Um, all of our high school kids will be equipped with a laptop computer and all of our middle school kids will be equipped with an iPad and we're going to begin moving into that 21st century self-directed student-paced learning where the kids are going to have access to the technology and entire, in, 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 that, in that case the entire world in terms of research and ability to, to find things and to um, experience a, a self-directed learning model and it's going to be a neat change for our teachers as they think about how they become coaches rather than fountains of knowledge. This, we're coming up on our ninth season so it was opened in March of 2004 and we started having shows the following fall in there. It's a great story. Um, Marie W. Heider is a West Salem native who was a teacher. She did not teach in this district, but taught in Wisconsin primarily. And in the late 90s, there was an anonymous, revocable trust set up with a million dollars. But it was revocable, and um, no one knew it was Marie Heider at that time. And until she died, it could have been changed. At approximately the same time, there were numerous referendums to build an auditorium and to expand the high school. So um, that uh, spring, there was a referendum in two parts. And one was to expand the high school and one was to build an auditorium. And the high school referendum passed fairly convincingly, but the auditorium uh, referendum passed by less than 20 votes. And so the, it's actually paid for by the members of the community of West Salem, by the taxpayers. But shortly after that, Marie Heider passed away, and it was her donation that added all the bells and whistles, that made it the state of the art, that made all of the wonderful tech and dance theater or dance studio and um, the special things that we think set the Heider Center apart. So it was actually part of a school referendum, and then this donation was on top of it to make it really a state of the art. We can handle any type of performance, and all of the people um, without any limit have all loved using our facility. All of the people who've toured all over the country um, are always impressed by what we can offer and the high quality setting for their music. 
it's owned by the school district. Okay. So the school gets first uh, first pick of any dates and any usage. So it's used by K through 12 students for um, plays and performances and awards and ceremonies and you know the summer musical and any high school plays, music concerts throughout the year. And then the Hyder Center board does the professional groups that come in. And frequently we can have professional groups that will also then do a show for the school. Stage series is five different shows that are national touring groups that we bring in. Uh, we pay them and then we have season tickets available and general admission, or I'm sorry, specific admission tickets um, sold individually for all those shows. The West Salem uh, band program in general, five through 12, is a very strong program. Has been for decades. Uh, it's not anything new and uh, we're very, having a very good season this year with the marching band, uh, one of the best sounding bands we've had um, in the 13 years that I've been here. Um, but we have a great uh, middle school staff, uh, Ryan Waldhart, Martina Glazel, um, and then Kelly Martin and myself are at the high school, and uh, we're just a, a big team, and we all see things the same way, and it's a, it's a great team to be a part of. Uh, we have 111 musicians, nine color guard, two drum majors, um, a panther, and, uh, and then the dance team goes with us. So when we're on parades, we have 132 kids on parade routes. And uh, when we're on the field, we have around, uh, we lose the football players, so we have around 100, and maybe 15 or 110. I attribute the success of the, the band program, the community support is a big one, the parent support, uh, energetic directors, um, the people I work with are great. The kids I get to work with are just awesome. I absolutely love my job. Um, I don't look at it as a job. I just absolutely love coming to work um, I have no problem getting out of bed coming to work because I just love being with the kids. They're just a blast to be around. Yeah, there's a lot of concern about the budget uh, issues that may arise next year and a lot of uncertainty. There's just a lot of unknowns as to what's going to happen. But um, of course, I truly believe that the arts is imperative. Um, whether you're a drawing or 3D art or you're in choir or you're in band or any kind of art that you're in, um, very important for that brain development, that brain activity uh, for a well-rounded person. Um, the marching band, for instance, is one of the biggest teams in the school. There's 120 kids in here that all have to operate to get one goal. And there's a lot of different personalities and a lot of different people and a lot of different philosophies that have to work together um, to do one thing, uh, to be a good band. Whether it's concert band, jazz band, marching band, or whatever they're doing, and they're just incredibly busy. I think we have 35 performances a year or something like that. Um, they're busy, busy people. Uh, so I think it's imperative to teach teamwork, collaboration, um, to be in, a, in, a, in an organization such as a choir, band, or, or art. Kelly Martin has just been instrumental, no pun intended, in uh, the halftime shows the past two years. She has organized squads of five kids and put a, um, a kid as a squad leader and then created the halftime shows and picked all the music last spring. And so it's all on paper, we teach it all to them in June, and then we come back at the beginning of the year, and they've already learned it, so we just have to kind of touch it up. Um, this year, all of the show's themes are based on New York. We went to New York last year, and she thought, hey, we need to do a New York theme. Uh, the parade we're playing this year is a song uh, from a Cirque du Soleil show. Uh, the song is called Distorted, a very high-powered um, number that they just sound great on. I couldn't be happier with how they sound. We, we've heard in other parts of your show all the wonderful co-curricular activities and kinds of things. It's a, um, West Salem's just a great place to raise kids. But one of the things I think that we sometimes um, overlook is the fact that our kids just perform um, right near the top in, in the region, in the state, and in the nation in preparation for post-secondary enrollment and, and quite frankly in preparation for life. Um, we're academically, we take a backseat to nobody.